Hilma Af Klimt was a Swedish artist born in 1862. Uh, she trained as an artist in uh, the academy. Her public persona was landscapes, portraits, which she sold and exhibited. But she led this ulterior life, this sort of secret life, where she met with four other female artists, and they called themselves the Five. They would communicate with what they believed to be spirits and then create sort of automatic drawings and automatic writings that were communicated through them. She received a commission by one of the spirits in 1905 to create her great body of work, which is the Paintings for the Temple, which is the focus of the Serpentines exhibition. The Paintings for the Temple, the first series within that, that's called Primordial Chaos, and it really shows sort of the beginning, this primordial soup, this chaos that began at the start of the universe and then pulled into these divisions. And she understood color as being very part of the idea of sort of division and dualities. Yellow, she understood as representing masculinity. Blue was uh, femininity. And green is sort of the unity of the two. So that when you see primordial chaos, those are the colors that she's sort of battling with and playing with throughout the series. She um, didn't produce abstract paintings as we know them, say, from Mondrian. Her reference is not only geometry and mathematics. Her paintings are full of shells and spirals, and it, it, one has the feeling that they are alive and that her uh, spiritual realm, that higher world that she is uh, trying to depict, is a world of life, spiritual life, perhaps. There's a series called The Swan, uh, which we have here at the Serpentine, and it's almost like a pedagogical example of a version of abstraction, if we come back to that word. Abstraction can mean different things in Kandinsky or in Mondrian, but here we have a kind of development or a movement from representational ornamental shapes to more and more reduced uh, forms, and in the end we have a kind of target painting. It's very clear that it's a kind of process of abstraction rather than one image. The altarpieces are the last works in the paintings for the temple, and they are this final stage in Hilma's vision of original oneness. They have this very sort of complete geometric aesthetic as compared to the first within the series, Primordial Chaos, which you can see has this very sort of different visual elements, very sort of chaotic. The series, the 10 largest, which were made in 1907. There are originally 10 in the series, and we have eight on display here. They really chart the stages of uh, human life. Two she named childhood, two she named youth, four paintings she gave to adulthood, and then two to old age. And they really expand from this merry sort of micro idea of looking at things very small to this very macro, this expanse of the universe. And that's something we see throughout her work, that it sort of shifts and expands from being very small to being very big. And she understood there are these very essential um, forms which are constantly repeated throughout nature, be it in the universe to, you know, the smallest flower. In 1908, she made the next group within the paintings for the temple, and that was the Evolution series. She was making these works at a very sort of critical time for scientists and philosophers when Darwin had published his theory of evolution. She was also thinking about a very esoteric cosmology in her relationship to evolution. And there was this moment of this great debate of where we came from, how we came to be who we are. The exhibition also includes a number of notebooks. Uh, three of those notebooks are from when she was working with the collective The Five, the four other female artists, and they show these very automatic techniques, the writing and the drawing. And then three other notebooks really show how Hilma really documented her, her practice. So almost creating a legacy very early on, like a catalogue resume. And that's something that I think is important to think about with Hilma of Klimt, is that she did understand herself to be a pioneer. She did want others to be able to be influenced and to come to her work and was very conscious of her legacy. And these notebooks, this very sort of meticulous documentation of all these works really symbolizes and really shows that.
one could say that she wasn't a pioneer because she didn't start, you know, she didn't have a school, pupils, uh, disciples. But of course she was a pioneer in the sense that she wasn't following anyone. One can see inspiration in books and in theoretical texts. She was definitely a well-read person. And I think that is an important thing, that um, on the one hand she doesn't belong to the, 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 the group of artists that we all have read about if we read the art history books. She's different. We don't want to squeeze her and we shouldn't try to force her into that narrative that already exists. But on the other hand, she is close to that world because she was a painter. And she saw Edvard Munch early on in, in Stockholm and she was very aware of the intellectual movements of her time. I guess she was painting for an audience that didn't really exist yet. She had her friends, but uh, we get the sense that she was painting for the future.